Lucy, why are you on the couch? Why? You know you're not supposed to be on the couch. Look at this one on top. That is Miss Puss doing what she does best. She has the cleanest asshole in all Delaware County, as you can see. She's really getting in there. Yeah, you. So anyway, uh, I haven't done a cooking video in a while. I'm going to make some fettuccine alfredo today. And <clears throat> one of my favorites. And uh, the whole thing with fettuccine alfredo, a lot of people will buy the can of sauce and just pour it over the um, pasta. Uh, it, it, it sucks that way. It really does. You know, you just really, you got to do it the hard way to make it taste better. You know what I mean? So I do my own sauce from scratch. It's really not hard. It's a little time consuming because it takes a while for it to get thick. But it's easy. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that. And this is what you're going to need. Now you can use use you can either use like coffee creamer, like half and half, or even better, uh, heavy heavy cream, which I don't have any, so I still can use half and half. I'm not too concerned about it because uh, I'm going to make it thicker with some cornstarch. You're going to need cornstarch in any way to, to thicken it up. Uh, you can try to use flour, but flour always lumps together, and then you get lumpy lumps. In your sauce, and there, it's hard to, it's hard to get them out. It's a big pain in the ass. So there's a little trick you do: a little cornstarch and some water, and it will not lump up at all. Okay, so cornstarch, uh, half and half, garlic powder, salt and pepper. Really, that's it. Um, some people put Parmesan cheese, which of course you need Parmesan cheese or any kind of grated cheese. Uh, I do that, I don't put it in this white sauce, I put it on the pasta when it's finished. And a stick of butter, right there, my best friend. So let's get started. Okay, I'm not going to talk about holsters today, I know you guys all want a break from that. And uh, it's doing okay, it's, it's steady, the business. Uh, it's not as busy as I was hope of, as I would hope it to be. I wish it was busier, but it's 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 doing all right. So, might as well put one in view. There's a leather textured armor guard holster of a Glock 43. See that? You know that shit's gonna be in there somewhere, right? Yeah, I'll leave it there. Okay, so pot's heating up. I'm going to make a lot of sauce, so I'm going to use a whole stick of butter, and this this is going to feed about three or four people. All right, so I'm just going to use regular butter. Do not use unsalted butter; you will get it's, you'll defeat the whole purpose, and you'll have no flavor whatsoever. You have to use salted butter. Okay, so I'm just going to put that whole thing right there like that. <coughs> Alright, I'm going to turn the heat down because all we want to do is melt it. We don't want to cook it, we just want to melt it. And then I'm going to get some half and half. Like, I don't have measurements, I don't do that. I just put shit together and keep tasting it until it's done. And when it tastes really good, keep adding salt and pepper to what I like. And when it tastes good and when it's thick enough, it's done. I don't, you know, I don't have a cup of this, a half a cup of that. I don't know how to do that stuff. So I'm going to pour some half and half in here. Uh, uh, a good amount. Good amount. Yeah, that's good. Last time I didn't make enough sauce, I had too much pasta. So, okay, so we got a stick of butter, half and half. I guess the pot's filled up to about here, up to about there. I don't know. That, that was probably almost, this is a half a gallon, so there's probably a quarter of a gallon left. So that's about how much that was. And then I'm going to have a little bit of garlic powder. Now you don't want a lot of different seasoning. It's fettuccine alfredo. Alright, so the garlic powder is going to give it that aroma that it needs. And then the, uh, the flavor is going to be the butter, 
and the cheese, uh, the Parmesan cheese, and the salt with fettuccine alfredo. Okay, so here's this. Just a little bit of garlic powder. That's plenty. Okay, it gives it that smell, that aroma. It, it, it gives it a little flavor too, but it's more of a uh, an aroma thing. And of course, some salt and pepper. Uh, be very. Let me see if I can find the other salt shaker because this one sucks. All right, be generous with the salt. Don't be afraid to put the salt in there. Like, kind of put it in there because this is one of the key ingredients. Believe it or not, it's the salt and just a little bit of pepper. I don't need a lot of pepper. Now at the end, I'll put um, uh, red pepper flakes just for color because it looks nice and it, I like I like red pepper flakes. Well, this is the thing. This is the key right here. Let me see. Let's get this going. Stick of butter's not melted yet. Just stir it. Okay, see how watery it is? I don't know if you can see it. You can see that. See how watery it is? That is your biggest task. We need to get that nice and heavy and thick. And it takes a while to get it that way. But I'm telling you, if you do it this way, and, and uh, don't go buy the canned stuff or the ready-made fettuccine sauce, you're going to see uh, this tastes so much better. So much better when you do it like this. So the whole thing is, one of the main problems is when you put cornstarch or flour in there, it clumps together and you have balls of flour in there and then you're like, you're stirring it for like for hours, it just won't come out. So what you do is, you get some cornstarch, don't use flour, use cornstarch. And I'm going to put about a teaspoon of cornstarch in that little cup right there. Find a friggin' teaspoon in Christ, these spoons are huge. They look like fucking snow shovels. God, could it be any bigger? Oh, here's a little one. I don't know. Like I said, I don't, me I don't measure that much. Okay. And then we're going to put some cold water. Cold water, not hot or warm. It's got to be cold. Okay, I'm gonna fill it up with water and I'm gonna mix it like this till it looks like milk and no lumps are in it. Okay, now I don't want to pour it in that sauce until it's all warm and hot. The sauce that is. And then what you do is you add it in there slowly. I just don't want to make a mess, that's why I'm this is a great trick, the cornstarch with the water. Also, another reason why I use a lot of salt and a lot of butter is because you're going to be adding cornstarch and water in there. That's really going to dilute the flavor. So that's that. That looks pretty good. That looks good. So that, it looks like, um, I don't want to say that. Kind of like almond milk. By the time you're done. So that's ready. I don't know if I'm using all of it. I know I need a lot of it, but I'm going to use a, 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 a good amount of it. Okay. So we're going to wait till this gets nice and hot, not boiling, just as hot as you can get it without it without it boiling, and then we're going to start adding the cornstarch. Okay, the butter is all melted in there. And what I'm going to do is, uh, since you see, is it's way too watery to be any kind of cream or any kind of sauce. It would be useless. What I'm going to do is get the cornstarch, and before I pour it in, I want to mix it again because it probably settles to the bottom. So everything has to be even. Just stir this slow and uh, add the cornstarch in. It's 
start with about that much and it's pretty amazing how it works now if you were sitting here staring this you're going to be like there's no way this is going to get thicker it takes time so now I'm going to crank the heat up a little bit because it needs heat too a little heat not all the way up just like a little more than medium and you just got to sit here and move it around and just wait it takes a while it takes a good amount of time but when it's done I'm telling you so as you're doing this it's good to taste it add salt like I just diluted the whole thing with water and cornstarch so it's probably going to need more salt again so I'll taste it and see if it needs more salt and remember when I uh, I'm not going to show you how to boil pasta. Everybody knows how to do that. Okay, but, but when you put it, when you put it on the pasta, um, do not rinse the pasta off. Uh, I see a lot of people do that. That's the worst thing you can do. What, what happens with pasta is once you cook it and then you drain it, it has like a coating of starch all around the noodles, all around the pasta. And, and that's good, you want that on there. What that does is, um, when you pour the sauce on the pasta, it acts like a, uh, like a, something, it gives this, it gives the sauce something to adhere to. It actually, it, it, the sauce will coat the pasta and stay on it because of that starch on there. It actually helps that. And I learned that, like, a long time ago, because when I first started, learning how to do this kind of stuff. I used to rinse the pasta off and then, you know, my sister, I think it was, she's like, well, she goes, oh no, I'll never rinse the pasta off. I said, really? She said, no, that's good. You leave, leave it the way it is. All right, so this is going to take a long time. I'll, uh, probably like from now, another 15 minutes and you just got to keep stirring until it gets thick. So we'll, we'll come back and uh, do that. Or we can talk about other stuff. Uh, might as well talk about holsters, why not? Because I said we weren't going to talk about holsters, right? This is what happens when you're not a professional and you do YouTube videos. You're not a professional. So, Lucy, please stop that. Thank you. I just gave her a treat and she's licking her friggin'... Her, uh, she just ate, she just had a treat, and now she's looking at her friggin' bowl, her, trying to act like, you know, I'm starving over here. She might be a Democrat. I think she is. So, as far as the holsters go, I just want to let you guys know, I have the, I'm surprised I didn't get uh, a bunch of orders for it. Um, I have the new Springfield Hellcat. We're ready to make molds for that gun now, and that's that's supposed to be a really hot gun. I figure, hey, when I get this mold, this is gonna, you know, get me a little busy. Uh, didn't happen, so I don't know. Maybe not as many people have that gun as I thought. I thought everyone was buying that gun up. I get a lot of orders for the P365. I get a decent amount of orders for the Glock 43. Do you know? This is surprising. I never got an order for a Glock 42 yet since that website's been open. I never got an order for a Glock 42 yet. That is absolutely, that blows my mind. Crazy. You just don't know how it's going to go. Alright, I am going to turn the camera off for a while. We're going to wait till this gets thicker because it's going to take too long. I'm going to sit here and talk about nothing. Alright, so it's just about ready. Took a while. You can't mess this up. You know, you know what? The only thing that'll mess this up is if you get impatient. If you get impatient, then you're gonna mess it up. You just gotta you just gotta wait till it gets thick. It takes a while. So what I did, see how this looks? Look at it now. See how it's like like pancake batter? That's how you want it. Not quite as thick as pancake batter, but like a cream. And then, you know, remember, it's really hot right now, so as it cools, it's probably going to get 30% thicker, 25% thicker, because when it cools, it will get thick, even thicker. So right there, see how it's coating the spoon? You just put the spoon in, and it's just staying on the spoon. 
that's how you know it's uh, that's plenty thick enough. So that's ready. So I'll do is I'll turn the gas off and take it off, and that's gonna cool. Lucy, thank you. While that's cooling, I'm gonna heat up the water for the pasta, which takes a while. And by the time that's done, that'll be thick enough uh, to pour on the pasta. And there's a couple types of pasta you can use. When I'm not lazy, which is rare, I will go to the Italian deli and get fresh pasta, which is frozen, it's fresh frozen pasta. This is the best, this kind. You can get it in the boxes like you have in the supermarket, but if you have Italian deli near, you can get fresh. It's fresh pasta that's, that's frozen. First of all, it cooks in half the time, and it tastes a thousand times better. The, the texture is so much better. So for four people, I'm gonna, I mean four people or three people, I'm going to say about two of these. Uh, I, I think they're a pound a piece. Yeah, so one, two pounds. And uh, I'm going to throw that in there. And you don't defrost them, you throw them in frozen, in case you were thinking about that, how to do that. So, hold on. You know, I'm not an expert on knives, but I think we all can spot quality when we see it. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm not talking about, I'm, you gotta see, uh, I wanted to show, I don't know if Bill's watching, he's a big knife guy, and my friend Tom Claveno is a good friend of mine, and David Hughes, these guys are like, in the circle, okay, so, uh, I was looking on Amazon, and I'm, I'm, I've been getting into a lot, getting really into knives the past two years, and... Uh, I'm starting to really like knives. I'm becoming a knife junkie because they're, they're so reasonable. You know what I mean? You don't have to spend like $400 on a knife to have a great knife. I mean, they have really good knives that ain't that much money. And I just got this one. Check this one out. Sharp, too. It has G10 grips. It's all stainless steel. It's D2 steel. Sharp as a razor blade. This thing is so sharp. Comes out really nice. Sharp looking, ain't it? You know how much this knife was? I'm trying to remember. Thirty dollars? Thirty bucks. Just wanted to show you guys that. Amazon's got a lot of lot of nice stuff on there that ain't a lot of money. And uh, if you look at this closely, I mean look how it's put together. Everything's real finished, has the front the finished looking screws. It doesn't even look like a screw. Very nice. The G10 grips. It's got the clip. Uh, there's no wiggle this way. That's how I test them. You know what I mean? And to test for sharpness, a friend of mine, no, not Cutlery Lover, he's a good friend of mine too, but a friend of mine showed me a trick. He goes, you want to see if a knife is super sharp? He goes, all you do is rest it on your fingernail. If it doesn't slip off your fingernail, it's really, really sharp. So that's the first thing you do, you put it on your fingernail, and if you feel a grab, because even if a knife is sharp and you put it on your fingernail, it'll slide off. But if it's super, super sharp, just go like that. If you feel a grab your fingernail, watch it. It is razor, literally razor blade sharp. So that's a good little trick he taught me in, uh, when I was working at Double Action. The guy loves knives. Alright, so I hear the pasta boiling. Not the pasta, the water asshole. Yeah, man. It's not ready yet. And I also got this um, Spider Co. Off Amazon. I like this one too. I do like this one because it has three screws on the clip instead of two. And you can reverse the clip back here however you want the knife to face as you pull it out of your pocket. This is a real nice knife. But you know, now here's a Spider Co, right? And <clears throat> the steel it's made out of, um, well, the, the, I think this is a uh, this is an um, an official spider co, but it's a good it's a China spider co, but it's a good one. Uh, this this steel is no better than the steel I showed you with the other knife. Real nice, same thing. G10 grips. Got that on Amazon for like I don't know, it was like forty bucks. 
All right, now it sounds reckless. Let me see. Got to be big bubbles. Hold on. It's not big bubbles yet. So I'm waiting for this to uh, boil, and as I am, this is cooling back here, and I just wanted to show you. Look how thick it's getting because it's cool. See it? Now it looks like pancake batter. Getting nice and thick. Look at that. That's perfect. So that's going to be so friggin' good. Alright, let's see what's going on. There we go. Big bubble. I'm going to put this in there. I like the length that they're cut too, because they don't stick out of the pot. You ain't got to force them down. Alright. So we're going to boil that pasta. And salt the water. I forget what it does, it does salt it. I've been doing it for years. Okay. And I use a spaghetti um, spaghetti grabber. Just to keep, you gotta separate them, you know what I mean? Just keep them all separated. And it cooks super fast because Al, that's why. Because the pasta's fresh, it's not. What they do is with the other pasta in the boxes, the hard pasta, all they do is is it, it's stale. That's that's what it is. It's stale. And then when you when they put it in the water, it rejuvenates it. But it takes a long time to do that. Now when it's fresh and it's just frozen, look at it, it's over it's it's already getting soft. Look how fast that was. Now any other time with the other kind of pasta, you guys know how long that shit takes, man. Depending on how thick it is, how thick the pasta is, man, it could take a really long time. And you really start getting impatient and irritated and you know, start yelling at your pets. Alright, so this is going to take a little bit before it's done. I just want to make sure they're all separated. And now I'll let that get soft. So how do you know when fresh pasta is done? Pretty simple when it floats, when it floats to the top. It's hard to tell if it's floating when you have a lot in there, but you'll see what I mean. When you push it down and then it just comes right back to the top, it's it's just about done. Same with like if you put raviolis in there, they're going to sink to the bottom. When they float to the top and about five minutes after that, they're done. So this pasta is all floating on the top, so we're going to, we're going to drain it. I'm going to put it in a bowl with a little bit of sauce so it don't stick together, and then we're going to plate it. So all the pasta in the big bowl is lightly coated with all the uh, cream. You have to do that, or, or the pasta, you have seconds, you know, it'll just start sticking together automatically. Okay, so you got to put a little cream in there and toss it around and make sure it gets on all the noodles so they don't stick together. Alright, so here we go. It's all lightly coated with cream, or, or sauce, whatever you want to call it. And... I don't know what your idea of a portion is. A couple of them stuck together there. The ones that are clumped together, usually I'll pull them apart or I'll just give them to the dog. She don't give a shit. Because sometimes when you put too much pasta in the pot, it don't have the room to separate. So I'm going to say right about there should keep me at my weight. Alright, so that's that. And then we're going to put some sauce on it, cream, alfredo sauce, and you can see how nice and thick it is. Just like that. That's all you need. Don't overdo it with the sauce. Same with, same with red sauce. Coat it and then put a, a plot, you know, put a little more and that's it. Now if you really want to impress your wife when she gets home, or your, your girlfriend, or whoever you're trying to deal with through your life, you can use a little bit of parsley flakes. It just gives it color, and it's not, it won't overpower with flavor. Parsley is very mild. It's, it's more for looks. Okay, now the most important ingredient is Parmesan cheese, or whatever kind of grated cheese you can get. You can get Romano, Parmesan, as long as it's grated cheese, this is... Now some people put it in the in the sauce. I don't like it like that. You don't need to do that. 
little Parmesan cheese. And if I can find it, I gotta have red pepper flakes. There they are. McCormick red pepper flakes. Just a little bit. Okay. And there it is. Homemade fettuccine Alfredo. Like I said, it's not it's not hard. It takes a little while if you have patience, which I believe me, dude, I don't have no patience. If I can do it, you can. Um, it'll come out really good. You'll really enjoy it. All right, I'm getting into this shit. Then I'm going to crush furniture all night long, like a beached whale, watching the ID channel, because that's what I do.